Next up, let's finally also bring the bookings data into our application. So let's come back here to Superbase and to the table editor. So here we now want to get our bookings into the application. But first of all, let's actually create a new booking so that we have not just this one row here. Now for that, we actually also need another guest. Because remember how a booking contains both the ID of a cabin and of a guest. So let's create one here quickly. Let's say Stephen Williams. And here all of this doesn't really matter. Let's say Portugal. And here again, this is not that important. Let's just save so that then we can create another booking. So the start date, let's say, is this one right here. So 29 and then here finish, which means two nights, four guests. Let's say 500 here and then unconfirmed. True and true. And now again, we need to select the cabin and the guest. So the cabin, let's say, is this one with the ID of 18. So this is now the foreign key. And then the guest ID is another foreign key. And so that will be the ID number two for the guest that we just created. All right, and so now let's get back here into our application. So first off, let's add a new service here into this API bookings file that we already have. So here we have get booking, but that's only for one individual booking. So let's now create get bookings for all of them. So get bookings and this doesn't need any arguments at least not for now and this time let's actually write the query by hand because we don't always have to copy paste so here we're going to await the super base and we want to select the bookings table and from there we want to select, for now, just everything. All right. And then here, well, maybe we can actually copy from the API cabins here. So the rest here is exactly the same. Let's just grab that here and here. Bookings could not be loaded. So we want to get this data right here into a bookings table. And that bookings table should be here on the bookings page. So let's start with that one. So here in pages, we get to bookings. And then in the bookings folder here, we actually already have the table. And so let's just include that here. So booking table and here we don't need to wrap this into a row because we don't need there to be anything else so booking table and here as well and then features just like this all right and here, of course, we need to now return a fragment. And there we go. So this is our table. And so let's go check it out. So here we have for now this empty bookings array, which is the reason why here it says no data to show. Then here we again are using the table component that we created in the earlier section. 
And then here this time we have the name of the cabin. So the cabin that the booking belongs to. We will have the guest, the dates, the status of the booking and the amount that the user paid. And then again here one column for the operations. And then we also uh, have here the table body which will simply render the array of bookings. And of course the columns here are different than what we had before but I just fine-tuned them here so that they fit the data that we will want to display there. Now one thing I actually want to do here which is that when there is no data then we want to not even show the table but this empty component that I have here. So this one here which takes in a resource name and then prints simply this string here. Let's actually call this resource name and then well now I closed the table apparently. So here let's just say if there is no bookings because this can of course happen then return empty with the resource name of bookings. All right, now here that needs to be bookings dot length, of course. And so there we go. We could have styled that a little bit better, but that also works. Now I just want to quickly add the same thing here to the cabin table. So maybe here we can automatically import that. Yes. And then there we go. Next up, we now need to basically connect this table here with this get bookings function that we have. Right? And the way that we are going to do this, so the way in which we are going to fetch these bookings is again using React query. So let's grab this use cabins here and just copy paste that. So if you want it, you can of course now to practice React query, write this here on your own. But I will just keep this here and only change what I really need. So here the data is going to be called bookings, the query key also, so the name inside the React query cache, and then here get bookings. Delete this, and here it's also bookings, and there we go. And so now in here we no longer need that. But instead, we will get bookings and the is loading state from use bookings. Okay, then we also need to import that apparently. Use bookings and here this is a named export since this is a React hook. And then apparently, yeah, here we need to change this name, of course, as well. Use bookings. That's why the automatic import also didn't work earlier on the table. And now here, if this is loading, we also need to return something else. So if is loading, then return the spinner. Now that seems to be almost working already, but here we will have some problems uh, and the reason for that will be clear in a minute. So for now let's comment out this part here of the table body so we can actually take a look at our data here in the React Query DevTools. And probably we won't have any data here yet even, or maybe we do. Yeah, actually we have. So I thought we didn't have the role level security uh, policy enabled yet, but apparently we do. 
And so we do get here the two arrays with the two bookings that we already have. Now the thing is that here we have the cabin ID and the guest ID exactly as we have them right here on Superbase, right? However, here in our table, we actually want to display some more information about that guest. So of course, not the guest ID or the cabin ID, but instead really the cabin name and here also the name of the guest and maybe even the email address. So in other words, we don't just need these IDs here, but really the data that belongs to this cabin ID with this number and to the guest ID number two. All right. So we need to not only load the data about this booking, but also about this cabin and this guest. So that sounds quite complicated, but fortunately for us, the Superbase API is really flexible and can easily do all of that. So right here where we select, right now we are selecting everything, right? But here we now need to actually add some more things. So we need to add this comma here and all inside the string. And then we need to use the name of the tables that we are referencing. So that's cabin and guests. So here we have this cabin foreign table. And so then here we want to select everything from that table. And then let's use another comma. And then let's select everything also from the guests. Give it a save. And as we try this again, we get some error again. So here, search for a foreign key, you meant cabins, ah. Right, so here it's called cabins. So let's force a reload here. Then let's see again. And beautiful. So now we no longer have just the IDs, but really also this data itself. So now we get cabins and then exactly the data about that cabin and the same with the guest. Great. However, to display the data that we want here in the table, we actually don't need all of this here. So instead of grabbing everything, we can really only take the fields that we actually need. And so here we can, instead of writing the star, just write the field or the column name. So for the cabins, we really only need the name and for the guests, we only need the full name and the email address. And so by doing this, we reduce the amount of unnecessary data that needs to be downloaded. So that might not be a huge problem in this case, but if we were loading hundreds of rows in some other application, then it might be good to know that here we can basically just limit the downloaded data to what we actually need. And here we can do the same thing. So we can say we only need the ID, the created add date, we need the start date, the end date, the number of nights, the number of guests, the status and the total price. And so you see that all of these here are separated by these commas. So that's why then later we also have these commas here. So here to then separate uh, between these fields and the cabins and the guests. So again, these two foreign uh, tables right here. So let's see. And indeed, this looks a lot shorter. And here indeed we only get the name and then the users or the guests relevant data as well. Beautiful. So very important part right here in working with Superbase. Now, okay. Now here in the booking row, all we are doing is to then display the data. So first off, here we get this booking a prop, which we are passing in right here. So this booking row only takes this booking prop. And so then here I'm actually immediately destructuring 
even that object. So instead of creating these right here, like const start date and so on and so forth, I'm doing that again right here. And then I'm even destructuring already the guests. And so then basically all these orange ones here are the actual uh, variable names that have been created. Then this thing that I have here is just to basically convert the status to a color. So the unconfirmed status is blue, the checked in status is green, and the checked out status is silver, which will then become important because for each of the bookings, we have this tag component right here. So I can just open that for you. And so basically these are dynamic based on the received props. So here we then use a CSS variable with the color that has been passed in coming from the status to name. So again, these blue, green, or silver colors instead of hard coding them. Okay, so let's actually activate this. And of course, all this pre-built code is necessary so that we don't take 100 hours developing this project. But anyway, now here is our beautiful table. We cannot really see. Yeah, but like this, this is what the table is going to look like. Let's maybe make one of these bookings here checked in so we see the different colors that I was just talking about earlier. So this is one of the three possible statuses. And so as we come back here, React Query automatically refetches the data as we already know. And then here this tag becomes green. And of course, we still get all the other benefits of React Query, which is that if we move to another page and then come back, all our data will still be here. So with this, we quickly created this really beautiful table right here. And if all of that was a bit too quick for you, then please feel free to check out all this code that I had to pre-build here, including all of these functions here, and yeah, again, maybe this tag. And so by then it will make sense why the table looks this way. Now, once you're done with that, we then also want to implement up here the filtering and sorting again. But before we go do that, let's actually first load some sample data into our application so that we have a bit more to work with than just these two bookings.